Welcome everybody to our webinar this morning. I'm Jane, one of the arthritis educators, and today we're looking at living well with polymyalgia rheumatica, or PMR, which is what I will call it through this presentation. So a little bit about the condition itself to start with. I can get my slides to work. Okay, so PMR is a condition, it's not such a common inflammatory arthritis as um, perhaps something like rheumatoid arthritis, but it can become more common over um, in the older age groups from 50 to 70, for example. It's more common for women and often what happens is people notice pain and stiffness across the shoulders and the hip and thigh regions, but it can also affect many other muscles. People may also have what we call whole body symptoms, so generally feeling unwell, feeling fatigued and tired. Also can affect mood, feeling low, and um, mental health, and some for some people become depressed. Joint swelling may be another symptom and weight loss. We don't know um, all the causes of conditions like PMR, but it's generally thought to be a combination of genetics, our immune system, and also environmental fa factors. And that can include things like stress. Sorry. Um, So what usually happens is that, oh, I'm sorry, that people um, present at the doctor with, with the pain. And so um, your symptoms will be considered, also your health history. And generally blood tests are taken uh, to check your, in what they call inflammatory markers. Like a lot of inflammatory arthritis conditions, it, the diagnosis can be a little bit difficult. Sometimes um, people will re be referred to a rheumatologist or their care will be um, through their GP with the oversight of a rheumatologist. One of the things that is really different about PMR from other inflammatory arthritis is, is that it does usually, it is usually self-limiting. That's different from other arthritis conditions. Usually once you're diagnosed with an arthritis condition, it's considered to be lifelong, although people can go into long periods of remission. But the um, self-limiting factor of PMR, of course, is very different for everybody as well. It's generally around two to four years, but that yeah, is very in a very individual issue. One of the really key things to point out that there's a related condition to PMR. It's called temporal arteritis or sometimes giant cell arteritis. And this involves inflammation of the arteries in the head. And it's really important that if you notice any of the following symptoms, which I'm going to um, list now, that you immediately contact your doctor. So severe headaches and pain in, in the muscles of the head, tenderness or swelling at the temples, pain in the jaw, tongue or side of face when chewing, pain or swelling in the scalp, blurred or double vision. So yes, really important that you connect with your um, GP if you have any of those symptoms. We're going to have a look, look at the treatment options now, starting with medical management. And that generally involves prescribing of a medication, medications um, in the corticosteroid. It's corticosteroids. Uh, prednisone is the one that's commonly used. And that's prescribed as a gradually reducing dose. And of course, this is different for everyone and the progress of the disease um, or the condition is, is very variable. It's very important with medications like um, corticosteroids, including prednisone, that you only change the dose under guidance from your 
doctors or practice nurse, certainly get in touch and get professional support if you're um, you, if you have any concerns um, and so you can get advice, but don't change the prescription um, just um, on, your, on your own. Other medications which are often prescribed include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. And again, it's really important to understand how to use these medications, what um, the side effects are and how you can manage side effects. It's important um, to think about and remember also that another person that can be really useful as part of your health team, especially around um, questions to do with medications, is the prescribing uh, pharmacist where you collect your prescriptions from. They are another really good resource. So we're going to move on and talk about lifestyle management now. And, and that's a really important part of living well with a condition like PMR. The things that we touch on this morning, including pacing, exercise, nutrition, relaxation, stress management, of course, are really important for our health and well-being generally. But it's often not until we're living with a long-term health condition that we really need to focus on some of these aspects of our well-being. For some of you, what we cover may not be new information, but hopefully it will also be helpful to support your confidence and your motivation as you, you are working on some of these different aspects of self-care. But perhaps just first to look at the pain cycle, and this is one version, there's a lot of different versions of the pain cycle, and some of this may be familiar to you. If we look, start from the top up here, and persistent pain is what we call pain that lasts for more than three months, which of course is relates to any uh, form of arthritis. It can be very tempting, of course, to um, be less active and not move so much when you're living with a pain condition. But what happens then is that uh, we lose our fitness, our muscles and joints become weaker. And we can often start to get into the place where we're making no-go lists for ourselves and um, deciding that there's a lot of things that we can't do anymore, which can then add to any sleep problems, our um, level of fatigue and tiredness. Our mood and our emotional health and mental well-being can also be impacted. We can... Um, become stress, fearful, some, for some people, um, high levels of anxiety, maybe feeling angry and frustrated. Also then you can add in sometimes things like medication side effects, some people weight gain or loss. So again, our thinking, our fear of the future, our um, levels of depression can be impacted. Everyone has different roles and responsibilities for some people. This may then mean time off work, and so that increases stress and worry perhaps about um, money issues. So what we're aiming to do when we're talking about um, living well with a persistent pain condition or um, long-term health condition like PMR is break the cycle. So we're going to be touching on a number of issues that are a really important part of being able to do that. So let's start with stretching and gentle movement. With arthritis, what you're aiming to do is, from a physical point of view, is to keep your muscles and joints strong, and that's um, very important. Also, um, keep maintaining um, flexibility and mobility. So you're aiming to choose um, low impact activities. And this can include um, walking. And obviously we're quite limited at the moment to perhaps walking. Aqua exercise can be fantastic. A variety of ways we can um, move in the water. Obviously at the moment that's more difficult, but hopefully we're moving towards things becoming um, open again, like 
calls and also perhaps um, your regular group activities, which are a great way to do low impact exercise. That social connection can um, be really helpful for our motivation and, and um, confidence. One of the things that can be really useful though in the meantime is if you have a look at our website, we have an exercise DVD and that's a really good option when you're more stuck at home or even to use through the winter or just have as part of your exercise regime. There's also a lot of opportunities, free YouTube videos of a whole variety of different kinds of exercise, different levels of exercising, and they can be another good option at the moment when we're not so able to access our normal, um, perhaps, yeah, as I said, water exercise or group exercising. Now the green prescription, um, if you don't know about, this is a national program. It is provided differently in different communities, but on the last slide today, I will have a few different uh, opportunities for you to uh, develop more information around some of the topics we're talking about. And I'll have the Green Prescription National 0800 line. And if you don't know where to start with your exercise, if you don't know what's available in your local community, that's a really good uh, point of contact to, to get you started and to support you as you're looking at um, safe and appropriate ways to exercise. Nutrition, big topic also. So we are often asked questions around what's okay to eat and not eat. Is there an arthritis specific diet? I would say um, there's no magic arthritis diet. What you're really aiming to do is eat a balanced, nutritious diet. Sometimes if your appetite's impacted by your medications or your condition generally, try and eat small, regular meals, whole foods, which we'll touch a little bit more on in a moment. So foods that are going to give you good nutrition, are going to really support your energy levels and your mood. And so that in turn will also support um, your pain management. Be aware of things like alcohol, sugar, caffeine, and very a lot of very highly processed, uh, highly refined foods. They often don't give us good nutrition and they can be really inflammatory in the body. Keep well hydrated. Remember to um, keep up your water and perhaps things like um, non-caffeinated tea, just as a bit of variety. So just a quick um, picture, reminder about what we're talking about with whole foods, obviously things like fruit and vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, and also, of course, um, some protein. Foods that are high in omega-3 can be helpful. They're sometimes referred to as anti-inflammatory foods. Even um, so, fish is a key um, food here, um, as well as nuts and seeds. Um, just eating those small tins of oily fish uh, can be really helpful. Sardines, tuna, mackerel. Try to get the um, tins of fish that are in spring water, so you're not adding. Um, calories, unnecessary calories in there, but eating foods like that can yeah, be really helpful. Stress management, really, really important part of health and well-being generally. In a really difficult time for um, globally, and so we're having to look at um, different ways that we can keep connected, share our feelings, um, at the moment, but um, hopefully you're finding some ways to continue to do that really important part of managing stress. There's a lot of other aspects to stress management. We've talked about exercise and some of the physical aspects of why exercise is important, but it's also really important for your mood and your emotional and mental health. Re releasing those feel-good endorphins and, and hormones is, is a key part of exercising as well. 
can then also in turn be useful for sleep management and some other bits and pieces that we're going to talk a little bit more about time management. We'll talk about pacing shortly. So finding those activities um, that are enjoyable for you, listening to music, playing music, reading books, uh, craft activities are really, really important. So just a few more ideas on this page here. So distraction, that's, as I've just been saying, that idea of being involved in things that you find really absorbing and relaxing it might be craft activities. It's obviously um, sometimes at the moment we're all trying some different things. So finding those things, making sure there's time in your day to be involved in those enjoyable, relaxing activities is really important. Some people find things like meditation helpful, mindfulness for other people maybe prayer, um, massage is really helpful, getting that warmth and circulation to your joints and breathing. We'll talk about breathing um, now. So of course we're all breathing, sitting here breathing, but sometimes it's just useful to check in through the day, not waiting necessarily to you feeling really stressed and your pain levels are really high, but just to regularly check in and make sure that you're breathing in a way that you're, you're noticing that your lower abdomen is moving in and out, which means that you're getting the oxygen right down into your lungs, which is very important for energy levels, for your mood, and as part of pain management. We are asked often about uh, complementary therapies and herbal supplements. It's really important, this is a big business, and it is important about what you choose to spend your money on. And just a couple of safety messages. Even though we can buy these products, well, normally we can buy these products over the counter and they're considered to be natural, it's really important that you check with your doctors if a particular product is something that's okay for you considering your other health conditions and perhaps other prescribed medicines that you're on. Um, you can, of course, also use your um, chemist, um, your prescribing chemist to do talk about um, or ask those questions. Acupuncture is another thing that sometimes people find helpful, not so available at the moment, but hopefully soon. So it's not um, a long-term fix, but it can be helpful or some shorter term relief. Eat is um, a, a really helpful also way to manage, uh, especially aching joints, colder weather's also coming. So it's important to keep warm, keep dressed warmly, um, use of, and I'm sure some of you are already doing things like using wheat bags or hot water bottles on those achy joints. Cold can be helpful if you have a hot, swollen joint. Sometimes, yes, a warm shower is um, really helpful. Uh, the mornings can be really difficult for some people, so having a warm shower can be really helpful. Also using, some people enjoy washing dishes because then they can, or just having a bowl or um, some way of having some warm water in the sink so you can move your hands and do some hand exercises. Also foot soaks can be really helpful. So capsicum or um, rubbing creams or gels, there's a whole variety of these again. Um, sometimes I, I feel it can be just really about increasing the circulation and the warmth. So again, just um, balance out what's okay for you, what to spend your money on. Some people find products that have been around for a long time, like anti-flam, um, can, be, can be really useful. Now this is a really, another really key area that can really make a difference to health and well-being, including um, pacing. What you're aiming to do with pacing is to break that um, crash and burn cycle, which some of you may recognize. 
in the idea that perhaps you get up in the morning and think, well, this is a good day and just go for it all day, whatever that means for you, and then be flat on your back for three days. So you're really working towards an aiming to do as much on the not so good days as the good days. So that may include um, having to really prioritize and plan your days. Think about what you actually have to do, what you really need to do. Delegate, nothing wrong with delegating. Saying no, that's a good thing to learn. And just don't do it. So planning, prioritizing, really key ways to get this pacing thing happening. And that can be really, really good way to mean that you can have energy um, and pain, your pain management can be improved. It's important to have time and energy to do those enjoyable, pleasurable activities. Posture, just be aware of posture. Sometimes when we've got some pain, we can end up um, walking or sitting or moving in a way that's actually putting stress and pressure on other joints. So it's just really important to be mindful of, of posture as well. Joint protection, again, includes a lot of different products, which also haven't been so available, but are coming back more online at the moment. When we're talking about walking, which I'm sure a lot of you are doing for exercise, make sure as part of joint protection that you are wearing supportive cushioned footwear so that you're protecting your not only your feet, but your joints all the way up, your knees and hips and your back. Really, really important. You can also, of course, get um, in soles, which can be really helpful there as well. Excuse me, and a lot of other products. This is an easy reacher, which some of you may already have. It means you don't have to bend down um, to pick things up off the ground. Wide handled tools can be um, assistive products, can be really helpful, especially for the kitchen. Um, knee supports can be really useful, they can be part of keeping um, you warm. Other forms of splinting can be really useful. So a, a wide range of products available um, to support your joint protection. Okay, so I'm going to finish up now. And if any of you have questions, please um, feel free to post them. I'll leave the slide up um, as we're waiting for any questions. And this is to refer you to some other options to help with some of the things that we've only touched on today. So for example, um, the pain toolkit, Pete Moore and his resources online, really, really helpful to fill out a lot of the different ideas that we've touched on today. Um, this website here, Calm website, has got some really good um, ways to remind you or to support you if uh, around things like meditation, relaxation, exercises, um, a lot of information here on sleep and the Sleepio website. Um, of course, sleep is really important. It's really healing and restorative, but of course can be really affected when we're living with um, any kind of pain condition. The green prescription number that I mentioned at the top. So you can give that a ring and um, get information about your local um, exercise opportunities or perhaps where or what to start with. Health Navig Navigator is a really useful website, general website about health and well-being. Um, it's really helpful as well. Okay, so we're just waiting to see if there's any questions. And don't forget, of course, that you're welcome to call um, the arthritis 0800 number, 0800 663 463 to speak to a health educator, to speak to one of our arthritis educators. You can um, also check our social media on Facebook. Oh, Raywin, how does PMR disappear in time? 
we don't really know why this happens and what, what it is about this condition that's different. I mean, there's a lot of research happening around inflammatory arthritis, um, and we know more and more, but it's not something that, uh, it's a really good question. Um, and if I can find anything else out about it, I, we will post it on um, perhaps our Facebook. Um, but it just it seems to be that that's whatever happens over time. It just, it's because these conditions are about the immune system. So yes, there's a lot of things we don't know about why they happen in the first place and then why they disappear. Ross asking about um, prednisone. It's really important, Ross, that you um, talk to your GP or the rheumatologist if you're under a rheumatologist um, because prednisone is something, and for some people it is about having to take it for um, yeah, a, a reasonable amount of time. And that means different things for everybody. So it's not appropriate for us to say um, how long to take it for. You really, need it to be, you really need to be guided by your doctors. They'll be looking at things like your symptoms and also your blood tests, your inflammatory markers. So Ray Wynn, why, we, why do we still have wee flares even on meds? Again, um, we don't always know why people have flares. Sometimes people can start to see a bit of a pattern it may be that they've um, been more physically active. It might be that they've had some extra stress. Um, it may be that with the reducing um, medications, um, it may be that you have a bit of a flare up. Um, and it may, for some people, it can be, like I mentioned, a bit of an up and down process with the medications. So yeah, it's, some of that is still not totally clear. Julie, is there a connection between PMR or a gout? It's really, um, yes, interesting, isn't it? Unfortunately, you can have more than one kind of arthritis at the same time. There's not so much, um, Julie's asking if there's a connection between PMR, OA or gout. Um, sometimes when you have an inflammatory arthritis, which are also called autoimmune conditions because they're directly impacted by the immune system, which would include gout also. It, um, it doesn't mean you're more prone, uh, but you can also have, have them at the same time. Osteoarthritis is not considered to be an inflammatory condition, but certainly people can have osteoarthritis and also develop an autoimmune condition. Oh, Ross, again, expectations of PMR improvement over time. Yes, there is an expectation that PMR will improve over time, but as I said, it's really individual and, yeah, it can be quite frustrating um, because it is, all of these conditions are very individual and how we respond to the medication is very individual. So you, you can expect some improvement. But it's, yeah, try to, um, so remember, it's not just about the medication, it is a key part, but it's also about the lifestyle management as well. So um, I don't know if that's helpful, but um, yeah, I know it can be difficult because it's difficult to be black and white about some of these issues. Okay, I think we've come to the end of the questions, but don't forget, you can ring and speak to an educator if you need more information and support. Okay, thanks for your time, everybody.